Good evening. Magandang gabi po. Happy midweek. Mahaba na rin po ba ang mga buhok ninyo? Uh, we're excited for tonight. We will close out the Runaway Prophet series. Jonah, na parang ginawa natin Netflix. Uh, our final installment would be tonight. Uh, we started Jonah no, in a boat. We found Jonah in a boat running away from God. In uh, episode 2, we found Jonah inside a whale uh, running to God. And uh, by the way, Jonah is not a big fish story. It's a big God story. And uh, we found Jonah on episode 3 in, uh, on the street of Nineveh running for God. And uh, for our final episode, uh, we found now Jonah under a tree. You know, under a tree running without God. So doon sa first episode, pansin natin, medyo sabla yung ating bida. Sa second and third episodes, medyo nakabawi siya. Pagdating sa fourth episodes, eto na naman. So may mali na naman ata siyang attitude na makapansin natin na kung saan makapag-identify tayo no, bilang mga anak ng Diyos. So mag-recap po na ulit tayo. Tingnan natin ano nangyari sa, sa chapter 1 o sa episode 1 where we found Jonah in a boat, no, running away from God. We learned doon sa episode 1 na uh, you can attempt to run away from God but you cannot outrun God. That's impossible, right? And uh, we have five learnings for that uh, Wednesday. Uh, for episode 1, we learned that runners like Jonah, you and me, tayo, kung gagayahin natin si Jonah, we will run to dangerous places, right? Runners like Jonah always has a fear to play. Uh, has a fear to pay. Meron tayong pabayaran. Baka magagasusan tayo. Mawalan tayo ng time, ng effort. Mag-aaksaya tayo ng panahon. Mag-aaksaya tayo ng maraming bagay. O kung tatakbo tayo, papalayo si Diyos. Uh, natutunan din natin na talagang you can never flee from the presence of God. Imagine the creator of heaven and earth. Tatakbuhan mo. We learned sa episode 1 that runners like Jonah will always cause heartache and suffering. Sino-sino yung magsasuffer? Sino-sino yung sasakit ang puso? Nako, ikaw mismo. You will suffer. The runner. Plus, sakit din na magsasuffer. Yung people around you. Kaya na na-experience sa mga seafarers. And natutunan natin sa chapter 1 that runners like Jonah fail to realize that God does not want to pay you back. Or actually, God doesn't want uh, to uh, nang, kumbaga, nang, uh, pay back time. No? He wants to bring you back. Gusto niya ibalik ka. Ay, hindi siya, kumbaga, hindi siya, hindi niya concern masyado yung pagbayaran mo yung ginawa. You know, gusto niya talaga, focus na yun. He wants to bring you back in His presence. Yes, may consequences yung mga scenes na ginawa natin. Pero sa totoo lang, patatabunan na yan pagka naibalik ka sa Panginoon. Eh. Y- yung consequences, harapin mo. Yung penalties, harapin mo. Yung punishment, harapin mo. Pero mas mangingibabaw yung grace ng Lord. Tapos pinag-usapan natin sa, sa Jonah episode 1, yung similarity and difference ni Jesus at ni Jonah. Na pagdating sa similarities, pareha sila nakatulog doon sa boat. Tapos, uh, there was a violent storm on the raging sea. Pareha sila na experience yun habang natutulog sila. And all the people in the boat panic. Remember, the apostles panic. The seafarers with Jonah panic. And then they were both tasked to preach. Pero ang din difference sila. Ang difference sila, unlike Jonah, si Jesus is capable of calming the sea. Kasi obedient siya. Yun yung malaking difference silang dalawa. Si Jonah disobedient, si Jesus obedient. So obedience is better than sacrifice. Si Jesus, dahil obedient siya, he was able to command no, for the sea to calm down. Pero si Jonah, since disobedient siya, kailangan isacrifice siya. Pagpunta doon sa dagat, itapon. At uh, kumbaga, 
ingin dapat natin matutunan eh, na mas mabuti maging obedient na tayo sa Diyos sa mga authority sa atin, sa magulang natin o kahit kayo naman na at lalong lalo na sa Diyos kaysa mag-sacrifice tayo. No? Baling wala ang sacrifice. Obedience is the key. And then sa chapter 2, ano nangyari? No? Sa episode 2, now we found Jonah inside a whale or a big fish. No, sabi nila, this is a big fish story. Actually, this is a big God story. Now, this time, medyo nakabawi yung ating bida. He's running to God. Mihingi ng tawad. But dito, sabi natin na kung ihambing doon sa Matthew 40, we found no, a greater Jonah. And that is Jesus. Tapos napansin natin, may pagka-racist doon si Jonah. Kasi ayaw niya masigil yung mga taga Nineveh. Eh. No, kasi Israelite siya. Alam nyo, uh, pinakamalaki na tutunan natin sa episode 2, yung God's riches at Christ's expense or grace. No? Ano ba yung grace? And grace is yung unmerited favor. Grace is something we all desperately need but don't deserve. So, yun yung pinakamagandang natutunan natin sa episode 2. Actually, ang grace, it was mentioned 125 times in uh, English translation in New Testament. Uh, nabanggit siya sa The Good Samaritan, sa Luke 10, sa The Prodigal Son, sa Luke 15, sa Woman Caught in Adultery, sa John 8, no, sa story ni Zacchaeus, it's about grace. Story ng woman at the well, it's about grace. Jesus dying on the cross, that's the most beautiful grace. Alam niyo, tinanong din natin sa episode 2, what did God's grace work with Jonah? Alam niyo, pinaka-symbolism ng grace. Eh, he provided a big fish for Jonah to be saved. Diba? Tapos, God's grace gave Jonah and the people of Nineveh a second opportunity to be saved. So, in bis na wala na, no, sana patay na si Jonah nakain na ng or uh, nilamon na ng dagat pero hindi nagbigay ng second opportunity in Diyos yun yung God's grace yung second opportunity yun bang kumbaga willing kang patawarin no? tapos tinanong natin sa episode 2 sabi natin what did Jonah learn inside the fish no? Jonah learned thanksgiving na ito siya magpasalamat he learned to trust God in the most desperate circumstances, kagaya siguro ng mga na-experience natin o iba sa atin, na-experience kayo. He learned that we can forfeit grace that could be ours by clinging to worthless idols. Isa sa mga idols sa Jonah, yung selfishness, no? yung me, 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 yung naisip niya, hindi niya naisip ibang tao. Tsaka may attitude siya na may hindi siya magreklamo. May hindi siyang... Uh, Kumbaga, uh, he's, he's only thinking about you. Ano yung mga kabuti para sa kanya? He learned how futile it is to run from God. Yun. Kumbaga, it's nonsense. Takwa ng Diyos. Yun yung pinakamagandang learning niya. Tapos, uh, Jonah learned that salvation is only from the Lord. Without God's provision ng big fish, wala na. Dito na. Yung bida natin. Pero nandun eh. Nandun yung kabaitan ng Diyos. No, you cannot save yourself, nor your wealth, power, or fame cannot save you. Salvation is about surrendering to Him. Naintindihan ni John na yun, no? Na wala nang makakasave sa kanya. Hindi yung barko, hindi yung mga seafarers, hindi yung pagtakbo niya. Salvation only comes from God. And that is true, surrendering to Him. Okay, importante na para maintindihan natin mapalapit tayo sa Diyos. We need to surrender in humility. Kailangan lumapit tayo sa Kanya, humingi tayo ng tawad. At in all humility, surrender natin sa rigi natin. Tapos talikuran natin yung mga kasalanan natin. At magbuhay tayo ng bago. Ayan. Actually, isa sa natutunan ko no, dito sa episode na to, I realize that I am flawed and I am odd because of His amazing grace. No? And like sinasabi, I am a filthy sinner, saved only by grace. Nako, ano ba nangyari sa episode 3? This time, he's on the street of Nineveh. Ito na, he's running for God. From running away from God, then running to God inside the belly, 
and now he is running for God. Ano yung maganda yung pinakita niya dito? Uh, uh, alam naman natin na nabanggit natin before na ang Nineveh is na modern day Iraq. So obviously hindi to kampi sa mga Israelites. So we talked about that uh, God doesn't call the qualified; He qualifies the called. Kano yung ginawa na kay Jonah? No? He qualified Jonah to be called na padala doon sa mga taga-Nimevites. Tapos, natutunan natin tatlong bagay last Wednesday. Una, God expects you to keep your vows. <coughs> Sorry, nasamid daw. So, Jonah, uh, at baga, lumapit sa Lord in all humility. So he, he has this vow in his heart that Lord, okay, I'll run. I'll run with you. I'll run for you. I'll run towards you. I'll run with you. Kumbaga, let's do this. Kung ano pinapagawa mo sa akin. And then, uh, isang learning pa, uh, God doesn't want to let you go. Ano, ayaw niyang pakawalan si Jonah. Ayaw niyang pakawalan uh, ikaw. Ayaw niyang pakawalan ako. So, ito, magagandang bagay na tutunan natin. No, na, kumbaga, uh, kahit na minsan sinasadya natin na lumayo sa Panginoon, gagawin gagawin siya ng paraan para uh, ibalik niya tayo. Ano pa? Uh, learning, another learning ni Jonah last Wednesday. God wants to get you out of the belly of the whale more than you want out. So, kung ating katika na umalis dyan so, sa situation mo, eh, mas uh, gusto ng Diyos na wala ka na dyan. Gusto niya yung pinagpapala ka. Gusto niya yung makais ang buhay mo. Gusto niya yung ginagamit ka niya. So, yun yung purpose niya para sa iyo. So, wala siyang time na kumbaga mag-stay ka dyan doon sa limbo na, na kumbaga, eh, kumbaga walang nangyayari. Hindi niya nga na-appreciate na, na yung, yung Israelites eh, 40 days at uh, 40 years sa desert. Right? So, recap. Jonah was in a boat running away from God. Episode 2, Jonah inside a wave running to God. Episode 3, on a street of Nineveh running for God. Ano naman nangyari sa episode 4? Chapter 4. No? Now, he's under a tree. Ang ginagawa sa ilalim ng puno. No? This time, bakit? Running without God. So, okay na sana. No? Okay tumakbo ka, papalayo sa Diyos, and then lumapit ka sa Diyos, and then tumakbo ka kasama ang Diyos. This time, tumatakbo ka na naman, wala ang Diyos. Nakapag-identify ka ba? Ako nakapag-identify ka ako many times. No? Natumakbo ako sa Diyos, lumapit ako sa niya, sa Kanya, and then itinakbo ko yung pangalan niya, and then I preach the word, and then there was a time na I mean, I'm running without God. I, I, I feel depressed. I feel uh, useless. I feel hopeless. Nagreklamo ako. Madami ako mga, alam yun, mga bagay na, na hindi nag-agree sa Lord. Na, tingnan natin ano nangyari sa bida natin, sa story na ito. Uh, Jonah chapter 4, under a tree, running without God. So, Jonah's anger at the Lord's compassion. Imagine title pa lang, nakakatawa na, na nagalit siya dahil compassionate ang Lord. In chapter, one, in chapter 4, verse 1, it says, But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong. And he became angry. Ano yun? Dahil ba tumanggap yung mga taganini rights? Dahil ba naging humble yung mga taganini rights? Dahil ba tumalikot sila sa scenes nila? Nagalit si Jonah? In verse 2, he prayed to the Lord, isn't this what I said, Lord? No, para nanunumpot, ano? When I was still at home, nanun pa ako. That is what I, nandun pa ako sa amin, sa bahay namin. No? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. Kaya nga, tumakbo ko eh, papalayo sa Nineva, pumunta akong Tarshish. Ito na nga ba, yung sinasabi ko, Lord? I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God. Imagine, you, you, you're taking against God yung kanyang very beautiful nature, gracious and compassionate. 
Kaya ka na ng ganun. Sinisisi mo yung tao dahil gracious and compassionate. Too weird, di ba? Sabi ni Jonah, you're slow to anger and abounding in love. A God who relents from sending calamity. Ito na nga may sinasabi ko, Lord. Mga ako'y nandun pa sa bahay. Kaya nga tumakbo ko pa pala yung safe papuntang Tarsis eh. Eh, napaka-gracious mo. Napaka-compassionate mo. Hindi ang bagal mo magalit. At punong-punong ka pa ng pag-ibig. No? A God who relents from sending calamity. Dapat siyang pinaulan mo na yung calamity. No? Baga, kasi dyan na may sariling mundo ata ito. No? And verse 3 says, Now, Lord, take away my life. For it is better for me to die than to live. Okay. Ito yung utusan yan, Lord. We need to understand that the Lord has the decision who lives and who dies. If He says you will live 70 years, you'll live 70 years. If He says you'll die tomorrow, you'll die tomorrow. Okay? We don't have any right na pakialaman yun kasi hindi tayo ang creator. Hindi pwedeng sabihin ng MacBook Air na to na kay Steve Jobs na Steve Jobs I want to be destroyed nang na. Kung gustong i-destroy nito ni Steve Jobs kung buhay si Steve, Steve Jobs eh, anytime gusto niya i-destroy pwede niya i-destroy or pwede niya patagalin pwede niya ayusin pwede niya ano yun, i-repair here's the thing Ganun din ang Diyos. Wala tayong karapatan na sabihin na kunin yung buhay natin or magdikta kung kailan tayo magbubuhay o makamatay. Tandaan natin, creation lang tayo. He is the creator. At dito, ang ganda ng reply ng Diyos. But in verse 4, but the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? Kasi, nandiyan mo, binanggit mo kanina, slow to anger, compassionate, gracious, bounding. Is it right for you to be angry? Verse 5, Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter. Sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. Ano ba ito nag-expect pa na may gagawin ng Diyos? Here's the thing, hindi na nga gagawin ng Diyos kasi nga, hindi na siya ibibigay yung wrath niya kasi nga nag tumalima, I mean nag, nagsisi naman nag, nag, nag-humble down yung mga nini rights. So si Jonah naghihintay kung ano gagawin ng Diyos sa city. In verse 6, then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his comfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plan. Ito may provision ng Diyos. So kahit na tampororot ng si Jonah, nagmamakot. He provided a leafy plant na nag-grow over Jonah. No? Para hindi siya mainitan, hindi siya malamigan, whatever. No? Ma-ease yung kanyang discomfort at ikinatuwa niya. O oh, diba? Kahit nga sa panahon ng pagmamaktol natin sa Diyos, sa panahon ng pagtatampo natin, sa panahon ng Lord, why me? Bakit ako pa? Sa mga dinadanas ko sa buhay. Papakita pa rin ni Diyos na mahal ka niya, papadala pa rin siya ng comfort. Um, kadalas ang kinakatuwa natin. Pero dito maganda yung established ng Diyos. Kung sino talaga siya. No? In verse 7, But at dawn, the next day, God provided a worm which uh, chewed the plant so that it withered. Nako. Diba? Anong, anong nakikita natin dito? I can give you comfort and I can remove the comfort. Naalala ko doon sa Book of Job, no? Uh, he gives and he takes away. No? Sabi doon, but I will remain. No? And I will say that blessed be the name of the Lord. That's a good attitude. No? Kasi alam noong bida natin doon, sa isang kwento na yun, na 
ito ay ito lahat ng bagay na meron tayo bigay ng Diyos. Pwede niyang kunin, pwede niyang mag-remain sa atin, pero still, I will choose to say, blessed be His name. Si Joanna na kaya, ganun kaya ang kanyang attitude. No? Kasi pinakita ni Lord, I am in perfect control. I can provide you comfort, or I can remove the comfort. In verse 8, when the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind. And the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Ano, nahilo-hilo at nihimatay-himatay na si Jonah. Ikaw ba na, terikan ka ng araw eh. At saka scorching wind, ibig sabihin mainit. No, sa ano sa sa Pilipino at kapampangan eh, maalinsaman. Parang ano. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. Ito na naman. Tampororot na naman siya. At saka ang concern niya lagi, panakot niya, gusto niya mamatay. Di ba? Ikaw ba? Ganun ka rin ba? Yeah, Nautusan ka lang ng parents mo. O hindi lang naibigay yung gusto mo. Or, or hindi ka lang pinayagan sa party. I wanna die. I wanna die. Isa ganun tayo sa Diyos eh. Hindi lang natupad yung gusto natin. Hindi lang umayon sa plano natin. Lord, gusto ko lang mamatay. Here's the thing. Ulit-ulitin ko. Wala tayo karapatan na tapusin yung buhay natin kasi hindi tayo yung author of life. Merong author. So, siya yung magsisimula at siya rin yung magtatapos. In verse 9, it says here, But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? Magkagalit. Tama ba na magalit ka sa sa, sa plant na yan? Sabi ni, sabi, it is, he said, sabi ni Jonah. And I'm so angry, I wish I were dead. No, talagang pinapakita niya yung pagkadismaya niya sa Diyos. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. Remember, ako yan. Ako nag-tend yan, ako nag-grow dyan, ako rin ang nagpakain sa worm. It sprang up overnight and died overnight because it is my decision. Umbaga, ako, 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 creator, I'm in perfect control. Yun yung establish yan. Umbaga, hindi mo concern yun. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals. Okay? Concern ka sa plan, pero hindi ba tayo dapat maging concerned sa so 120,000 people na hindi alam ang tama sa mali? Ano yung matututunan natin dito? Sa, sa episode 4, sa, sa, as we close out in Jonah. The big God story, hindi the big fish story. Una, <laughs> kita natin yung frustration ni Jonah fuming mad, no? furious siya. Kanino kay Lord? Kasi invite daw ni Lord. <laughs> Number two. Pero tingnan rin natin isang banda. We cannot discount the death, dedication, and devotion of Jonah. He was chosen talaga. Number three. WWW. W, 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 no? Waiting and watching in the withering wind with a worm. So, ano yung big sabihin? Tingnan natin. So, number one. Isa, first learning natin dito sa chapter four. Una, fuming, frustrated, and furious at the Father. There are three reasons kung bakit nagalit si Jonah. Una, kasi si Lord, he allowed the Ninevites to leave who eventually pestered the nation of Israel. So, alam naman natin, kalabang mortal nila yan. So, nung nag-turn around, kalaban pa rin nila. Pero, yung sa isang, another reason kung bakit nagalit si Jonah, y- uh, yung mga Ninevites na wicked, na pinatawad, kasi humble, nag inhumility at mingin ng tawad sa Diyos. Kumpara sa ibang Israelites na pinili na proud sila eh, we're the chosen people eh. Na proud sila. 
uh, kumbaga lagi nila sinasabi na pinili sila pero nakikita mo yung 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 yung, yung heart nila na proud kung iyahambing mo dun sa mga Ninevites na weekend kumbaga nandun yung ano eh yun, andun yung heart ng Lord eh, na in, kumbaga kahit na ang sama mo pero rumingi ka ng tawad tinalikuran mo yung kasalanan mo God will talagang embrace you. Pero, yung mga Israelites, pinagmamalaki palagi, chosen people kami, pero proud ka naman. Diba, wala, wala pinagkahaiba dun sa ano. Tagal mo ng Kristiyano, proud na proud ka, anak ka ng Diyos. Pero lahat naman ng puso mo, mali. Iniisip mo, mali. Tapos, ang baba ng tingin mo sa mga hindi Christians, sa mga hindi born again, sa mga hindi pa hindi pa nababaptize or hindi pa tumatanggap o hindi pa oh, magulat ka baka ikaw yung wala sa langit sila nandoon. Tandaan niyo ang Panginoon tumitingin sa puso. Hindi sa number of years ng experience sa pagiging born again Christian. Tandaan mo yung 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 uh, yung magnanakaw Ilang minuto lang siyang Christian. Then chogi na. Pero ang sabi ni Jesus, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. Hindi sa number of years. Huwag natin tayong masyado na parang masyado tayong proud na ah, bakit 20 years na ako dito sa church bago ka lang. Last week ka lang na born again. Magkagulatan tayo siya na sa langit, ikaw wala. So, ang, 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 ang problema, uh, si Jonah, Meron siya idea na napaka-proud niya. Na parang um, tagal na ako sa Lord, chosen people ako ng Lord. Di ba? Pero, tignan niyo naman yung mga nini-rides kahit na wicked, nandun yung heart to ask for forgiveness. Kaya medyo battle si Jonah. Number third, and number three reason. God always changes his mind. He's so forgiving. Doon na iinis si Jonah. Ayon mo ba itang Diyos? Eh, pag sinagot mo to sa Bible school, sabihin sa'yo ng professor mo, F. Kasi tatangin niya sa'yo, uh, bakit? Lagi bang, parang sinasabi mo ba, hindi certain si Lord sa mga decision niya, sa mga niisip niya. That's not the point eh. Dito, ang Diyos, may decision na. Gugunawin niya na yung niniwa. No? Pero, what if meron mag-repent. He's so forgiving that he can change his mind. Di ba? Gunawin niya na yung, yung, yung mundo during the time of Noah. What if kung may mag-repent? Kaso wala eh. Yung sa Kelot, gunawin niya na. Di ba? Sabi na Abraham, uh, Lord, baka may 50 pa, baka may 40, 30, whatever number, pababa ng pababa. Ang sabi na Lord, we will save them. Hanggang ngayon naman, gano'n eh. No? Kaya nga, bilang isang krisyano, uh, I'm not talking about being a minister or a pastor or a reverend or, you know, uh, 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 a man of uh, clergy. I'm talking about being a Christian. Bilang krisyano, responsibilidad natin na dalhin ang mga tao at takahin sila sa Panginoon. Kasi, the Lord only prepared a wrath, but He can always change His mind when He see people coming to Him. No? And He's very much willing to forgive people. He's a God of second chance. Eh? Ano yung number two? Isang, uh, second learning natin. No? Hindi natin dapat i-discount yung fact na si Jonah, eh? Eh, deep din yan, kumbaga, dedicated, devoted. Diba? Baga pinili yan si Jonah. Hindi yan basa-basa na parang, baga choice yan ni Lord. Kasi tingnan niyo sa Jonah chapter 1, verse 9, palikan natin yung episode 1. Sabi doon, and he said to them, nagpakilala si Jonah, I am a Hebrew, a worshiper of the Lord. No? The God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. 
sa so, tumpang lang na establish na talaga naniniwala siya sa Diyos. No. Aaron tayo. Worship tayo every Sunday, masaya tayo. No? I'm a worshiper of the Lord. Uh, kilala ko si Lord. Um, in lang, sablay ni John, nakagaya rin natin. Minsan, masyado, masyado tayong proud. Di ba? Pero, thinking about this, no? you cannot discount the depth, the dedication, no? and the devotion of John. In a sense, pinili pa rin siya. Okay? Bakit? Kasi, si Jonah Prophet. One of the 66 names of the Bible named after him. Big time ka, ibig sabihin. Well, there's something in you. There's something about you. Okay? Tsaka, prophet is a prophet. Like Micah, Isaiah, like Jeremiah. I mean, these are like big time. Just like Jonah, hindi naman niya pinili. No? Hindi rin siya basa-basa natatakot. No? Kalmante siya, natutulog, no? sleeping while there is a raging storm. Na imagine, uh, ano na, uh, uh, nagkakagula na, tulog pa. At saka, imagine nyo, I think only the best prophet ang isesend ng Lord to be sent to a barbaric city. Kung magsisend ka na lang, hindi ka nang papadala ng pipitsyog yung prophet. Kaya we cannot discount si Jonah. Okay? Here's the thing. We cannot discount also ikaw. Talang lalo yung na, na kristyano, lalo na kung matagal ka na sa pananampalataya, tinawag ka na lang dyan sa ministry. No? Hindi pwede i-discount ng Lord in, in depth mo, in dedication mo, in devotion mo. And tinawag ka ng Diyos to perform a duty. And you must comply. Baga you must answer the call. No? Ano pa yung natutunan natin? Last. Natutunan natin sa episode 4. www. Ano ibig sabihin? Waiting and watching in the withering wind with a worm. Nako. Pahintay-hintay. Panood-nood. Ano na ba? Nagpugunaw yung batong. Tugunaw yung batong niliva? Paano gunawin na Lord na niliva? Eh, ikaw na witness mo, Jonah, na, na gano'n sila, nag, nag-ask sila for forgiveness. No? Tapos, nagpadala ng, uh, ng uh, uh, scorching wind ng Lord, nag-wither yung, yung plant, kinain ng worm, di ba? Isang, uh, dalawang bagay na naiintindihan ko dito eh, sa sitwasyon na ito. Unang-una, it is very clear God wants to save everyone. He wants to save the Israelites. He wants to save Jonah himself. He wants to save uh, the Ninevites. God wants to save everyone. No left behind Paris yung Panginoon. Kasi na may iwan. For those people na ginusto nilang may iwan, they choose na may iwan. Simple lang naman ang game plan ng Lord eh. Jonah, gagamitin kita para masave ang mga hindi dapat masave. No? He refused not to save anyone without using a human instrumentality. Kaya, lalong-lalo ka na. Episode 4 is for you. You, no, a Christian, a believer, God refuses not to save anyone, classmate, no, kasama mo sa trabaho, relatives mo, kaibigan mo, kapitbahay mo, without, you, without using you as His instrumentality. Gagamitin ka ng Diyos kung paano ka niya sinave sa kasalanan mo. Gagamitin ka niya para isave niya ang iba pang tao. Dahil God wants to save everyone. Ayun, doon nagtatapos ang kwento natin about Jonah. No? Nakakalungkot ng una, nakapag-identify tayo sa kanya. Para rin tayo sa Jonah. Bisa matagpuan tayo sa Nineveh, natagpuan tayo in a boat, running away from God. Tapo tayo, tayo sa vision natin, 
Punta tayo sa nagpapasaya sa atin. Punta tayo doon sa mga bagay na mali. Sinabi ng Diyos, huwag ka dyan, huwag ka dyan. Dito pa, dito pa. Pero palit natin. Nung sa dumating tayo sa sitwasyon, down the door in experience, we end up inside the wheel. This time, we run to God. And then we realize a lot of things. We hum- we humble ourselves to God. We ask for forgiveness. And then we found ourselves like Jonah on a street of Nineveh. Some of you were sent to your classmates, boxmates, relatives, kapitbahay, to share the gospel. Some of you are in the church, you know, ministering, worship ministry, whatever. Ashering, parking. <laughs> You're running for God. Then there came a point in time sa buhay mo na you are under a tree. Mamaktal ka sa Diyos, running without God. You see, life cycle, pero there is one thing na sure. There is one thing na sigurado. There is one thing na, na, na solid. This is not a big fish story. This is a big God story. Makikita mo yung play out ng, ng story at kontrolado ng Diyos. Ang buhay mo, kontrolado ng Diyos. Ang buhay mo, pwede mong laruin, pwede mong pag-isipan, pwede mong gawin yung gusto mo, pwede mga kabuti sa'yo, pwede hindi. Pero hanggat maaari talaga, babalik at ibabalik at ibabalik ka niya. Kaya e kung ako sa'yo, huwag ka na magpakalayo-layo. Bumalik ka na ngayon. Tanggapin mo na siya bilang Panginoon Tagapagbigtas. No? Talikuran mo yung kasalahanan mo at uh, humingi ka ng tawad sa kanya. Katapos mabuhay ka ng masaya, maligaya. At yung eternity, hindi mag-start yun ha, pag namatay ka. Mag-start yun pag tinanggap mo siya bilang Panginoon Tagapagbigtas. Kung ikaw naman, Kristiyano, tinatawag ka ng Diyos. Parang si Jonah to spread the gospel, to be part of the Great Commission. Alam lalo na ngayon sa mga time na ngayon. We need to double time. No? Kasi these are perilous times. No? We need to work hard for God. We need to make disciples. We need to evangelize. We need to baga, use every opportunity para mapa- mapaalam sa lahat ng tao kung gano'ng mapagmahal ang Diyos natin. And he, he wants to save everyone. So that's how we will how that's how we will end your know, acting uh, beautiful story about the runaway prophet Jonah. And uh, let me uh, invite you on Sunday to we'll talk about how to rebuke, speaking the truth in love. Yeah, natin. O paano ba mga rebuke? Yeah. Exciting yan. So, the following four Wednesdays, starting next week, eh, meron tayong uh, four-part mini-sito sila. Ito ay tungkol sa buhay ni JTD, Joseph the Dreamer, uh, learning from the life of Joseph. Now, part one, si Joseph, sa lang siyang dreamer. No, na naginip. Sa part two, he became the governor from prison to palace. Sa part three, siya yung tinatawag na Prince of Grace. Sa part 4, naging forgiving, blessed ruler. Usapan natin yan. Please be reminded din po sa mga church activities, every Wednesday, no, kanina, uh, 6 p.m., uh, meron po tayong Zoom Bible study. No? Then 7 p.m., we have this uh, midweek service. And then uh, Saturday, um, actually, meron pang ibang mga araw, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, pero malilito lang kayo. Tingnan mo natin yung mga major na gawain natin. Saturday, 7 p.m. Zoom prayer uh, party. Uh, Sunday, syempre, worship service natin sa Facebook and YouTube ulit. Uh, may replay po siya ng 11 and 7 p.m. At sa 7 p.m. meron tayong Zoom Bible study. So, wala pong password yung mga Zoom natin. May kita niyo yung personal meeting ID. And every day... Every day po, seven days a week, every seven o'clock ng gabi, we tried as much as possible to uh, play a replay, no? uh, mag-replay ng mga, ng mga uh, teachings na nag-start pa noong mid-March um, quarantine time. Para, kasi iba kasi yung time ngayon. 
instead of uh, we're watching a lot of uh, Netflix or whatever. Kung gusto niyo lang naman, at least may option kayo to watch uh, 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 our sermons from the time na nag-quarantine. At uh, pwede siyang gamitin as your devotional or uh, uh, daily bread. Kumbaga. Maraming maraming salamat po. Hayaan niyo pong ipanalangin po kayo sa ngayong gabi. Let's uh, close our eyes and bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for uh, your, your, your grace, Lord. For every time we run away from you like Jonah, we end up into places, na, na, a place of discomfort, a place of uh, uh, danger. But uh, you are our salvation. You are our, our refuge, Lord God. We thank you uh, as we ask your forgiveness, as we humble ourselves to you. You give us, Lord God, your grace, your unmerited favor. We thank you, Lord God, as we accept your call and uh, run with you, as we accept to minister with you. You bless us, Lord God, in a, in a, in, in a way that uh, it is, uh, it's hard for us to comprehend. We thank you, Lord God, that even though uh, there are times that nagmamakto kami, nagtatampo kami like Jonah, there are times that we question your authority. Still, your main goal is for, for us to be saved. And your main goal is for us to be used in our Nineveh. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your, uh, your, your endless mercy, Lord God. Thank you for your grace. Let me bless your people tonight, Lord God. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. By the greatness of the Father to the love of the Son, and by the infinite power of the Holy Spirit, you are all blessed. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you very much. We'll see you on Sunday. And uh, we hope you have a, a great week ahead of you. And uh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, happy midweek service. Happy Wednesday. God bless you all.